Hey guys, I get a ton of Primavera P6 questions from people all over the world. So here's one from a recent members only webinar that we did at plantacademy.com. It's pretty relevant and I thought I'd share it with you. Check it out. When calculating multiple float paths, what is the difference between total float or free float? What is the most used option in complex schedules? Ah, oh, another awesome question. Okay, great. And this one I can demonstrate as well because I have my advanced level projects in here. Let me grab my float path layout. Let's do a float path to phase one completion. So in this project, I have some interim milestones. This is the last milestone. This is the one sort of substantial and total have about a month of, or two of work between them. And then this is kind of a earlier milestone. So this is where we use this multiple float pass. Okay, so I'm gonna schedule it like this and I'm gonna say, here's my float path. And I'm trying to make it pretty for you. But here's float path one, right? And I'll put it in float path order. So this is float path one, which should be from the top of that project, the first milestone of the project to the end of that milestone that I specified. Let's see if it does that. Yep, there's my phase one completion. Okay, so the question is in these options, come on back, schedule window, here we go. In these options, we have free float or total float. And what is the difference? Should I be using free float and total float? So this is one of these things where it's confusing because we always think of total float, total float. We should always be optimizing everything for total float, right? So you would think that in this case, we would be doing things with total float. Wrong. In this case, we should be using free float, okay? Um, why? So I actually just go to the help. So check this out. I'll pull the help up over here. Hopefully it sends us to the right area. Yeah, advanced tab. Okay, so there's a little blurb here. I'm gonna read the total free float one first. Choose this option to define critical float paths based on longest path. That's your answer right there. Choose this option based on longest path. Total float, choose this option to identify critical paths based on the total float of activity relationships. Huh? I don't, I'm not even sure why we're doing that. Basically, what you find is that this gives you the longest path. This gives you the most direct path from one milestone, the start of the project to that milestone that you want. Um, when you use the total float option, you get a slightly, you can, you get a different result with what I believe are sort of like some other paths uh, baked in there. So this is it. Free float equals longest path. Why? Well, I think we have to break down, you know, how this thing works. And um, I haven't, I, again, I haven't done that. I think there is some sort of white paper on exactly what it does and it's a complicated algorithm, but basically that's the answer. So use, use that one to get your, your longest path from the milestone to, to whatever activity you specify. Hey, it's Michael again. I really hope you found this video helpful and just a quick reminder to let you know that we have some amazing Primavera P6 courses at plantacademy.com and we offer full support for those who take courses with us. So we're here to help you answer questions and let you succeed with Primavera P6.